The CIA says it is looking for revenge after a suicide bomber on a base in Afghanistan killed seven agents. The attack was devastating for the agency, which now more than ever finds itself at the tip of the spear. ABC's Nick Schifrin is in Kabul this morning. And, Nick, we're learning that the bomber was actually somebody that the agents on the base knew reasonably well, right? Dan, that's right. ABC News has learned that this suicide bomber was actually a regular CIA informant. This person came from the Pakistani side of the border over to Afghanistan, and we've learned that he's actually been to Camp Chapman multiple times before. Along the Afghan-Pakistan border, America's most dangerous enemies have a safe haven, and the CIA officers killed this week were trying to break that. At 6 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, one of their most valuable informants was driven onto the base. Against protocol, they did not search him, and he blew himself up in the gym in a crowd of at least 13 officers. The Pakistani Taliban claimed the bomber was a double agent working for them. The CIA had already been getting invaluable intelligence from him on the Taliban and al-Qaeda. They need to recruit spies. They need to recruit Afghans and Pakistanis who will work for them in secret and penetrate to the heart of the enemy's camp. That's the highest calling of a CIA officer overseas, to put a spy in the enemy's camp. If you can do that, you can win. The officers were at the center of the U.S. effort against Taliban and al-Qaeda. They collected intelligence on the most senior militant leaders, and they ran paramilitary operations to try and kill those leaders. In Pakistan, drone attacks that these officers helped launch have killed a dozen senior members of al-Qaeda. Our presidents have decided that targeted killing is going to be a tool of American foreign policy. This attack is one of the consequences of using targeted killing as a weapon of war. The Pakistani Taliban respond to operations by the CIA and the Pakistani military by killing civilians. More than 500 have died since October, and yesterday a truck bomber killed 90 when he drove into a volleyball match. This war is not expected to get any less bloody for the CIA. They are increasing their operations in both Pakistan and Afghanistan. And in order to take on the Taliban and al-Qaeda, they're going to need more of the types of officers on the types of bases that was attacked this week. Kate. Nick Schifrin, thanks. And let's pick up on that point now. Joining us to discuss the security challenges facing this administration is ABC News consultant Richard Clark, who worked with worked on terrorism issues for both the Bush and Clinton administrations, also for the Obama transition team. Good morning, Dick. Happy New Year. Good morning. Same to you. Uh, let's start in Afghanistan, then. You just heard Nick say that this was a regular informant. The U.S. is so dependent there on Afghan allies. What does this mean for our future efforts in Afghanistan? Well, it means that he was probably a double agent all along. And it's very difficult for CIA to know who to trust and how much to trust them. In this case, obviously, this guy had been providing a little bit of good information, and, and therefore he was trusted, trusted enough that they didn't right. search him. Do they, do they change that now? I mean, do you, do you expect major changes in terms of how they deal with informants? I think this will, will put a wedge between the CIA operations there and some of their informants. It'll make it much more difficult for them because new security rules will come in to prevent this sort of thing happening again. Those new security rules, while making CIA safer, will make it harder to operate. Right. The president this morning talked about the accused Christmas Day bomber. Uh, we just heard a report on that. He says he will do everything in his power uh, to make sure intelligence, law enforcement, homeland security officials have what they need uh, to fight terror to keep America safe. It would appear that a lot of people involved in that Christmas Day bomber, the people who knew information, followed protocol, essentially, did what they were supposed to do by the rules. Do the protocols need to change? Well, I think it's not so much protocols that need to change, but an attitude. People need to understand this is not a uh, nine-to-five job. Lives are at stake. Uh, important decisions are made every day. And that's difficult to remember sometimes when it becomes a daily drill. But in this case, I think protocols may not have been followed completely. And that's what the president is going to hear uh, in these initial reports. CIA may have sat on crucial information hmm. too long. They had information from the bombers, the alleged bomber's father in November. He went to the embassy and talked to a CIA officer there. Should he have been placed, do you think, on a no-fly list immediately? No, probably not, because simply having your father say you're troublesome shouldn't get you on the no-fly list. 
But if CIA had passed that information on to the analytical community, uh, then they could have pieced it together with other things. One piece of information usually doesn't tell you very much, but if you put it together with five or six other pieces, then a picture emerges. And they couldn't do that because CIA hadn't passed the information on in a timely manner. Dick Clark, always so valuable to hear from you. Thank you so much.